Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen, I'm a lifestyle vlogger. And in today's video, I'm gonna bring you guys four dinner ideas. They're pretty easy to make. So let's go ahead and get started with today's dinner. So today we're gonna be doing like a cheesy vegetable ham dinner. So I've got my ham. You guys could also use chicken, would work really well. Uh, we just happen to have ham on, on hand. We're using up leftovers. My husband did up a ham dinner over the weekend and so we needed to use this up but again chicken would be beautiful in this turkey whatever you got on hand or you could skip meat entirely um, i've got a bag of bird's eye normally blend vegetables so we're gonna get used those used up use whatever mixed vegetables you have on hand or if you just want to use broccoli go for it that would work just as well too and then i'm using brown rice use white rice if that's what you want to do and then i've got some cheddar cheese to shred up um, but you could also use if you have pre-shredded cheese works just fine don't go out and buy anything special for this it's a really easy dinner to make okay over here we're getting everything cooking on the stove i know stove's a little dirty husband has cooked something at lunch i will clean it all up after don't worry about it this is real life y'all know i don't sugarcoat anything okay so we got ham and veg in here going at it um my ham just needs to be reheated because it was cooked up the other day but if you have raw meat you need to cook it properly so follow instructions but once it's fully, fully cooked, throw it all in with your veg. Then over here, I've got one cup rice, one cup water, because I've only got two people eating it, and that's the serving instructions for two people. And I'm gonna add in one boiling cube, and the rice is gonna absorb that, and have some great chicken flavor. You could, of course, use beef or a vegetable broth, whatever you like to use. And while everything's cooking on this pan, I'm gonna go ahead and season it. So I'm gonna use some steak and chop seasoning, because it's good on everything. So whatever steak seasoning you have laying around, Guys, it is so versatile. So, just do it to taste. Nice, healthy dose all over. And I'll probably add a little more as we go on along. But we'll give it a quick stir and let everything cook and come together. While this is happening, I'm gonna shred my cheese up. But again, don't feel like you need to go out and buy a block of cheese. If you've got shredded cheese, feel free to use that. So while everything was cooking, <clears throat> I went ahead and added some of the steak seasoning to the rice. That way it would get some good flavor as well. At this point, my dish is finished cooking. So we're gonna add my rice to the veggies. And now we're also gonna add in our cheese. And I'd say I probably have about two to two and a half cups of cheese there. We're just gonna mix it all together and let the cheese start to melt. I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. And that's dinner for tonight. For dinner tonight, we're going to be doing up a ranch chicken. I seen it on Instagram the, the other day and thought it would be good to try. So I have five chicken breasts in here. Three of them are really decent size. These two are kind of tiny, so I did both of them. I think, you know, four really good size would have been sufficient. Anyway, sprinkled the whole thing with a ranch seasoning packet. And then I thought, what goes better with... You know, I just chicken bacon ranch just came to mind, you know. So we had some uh, real crumbled bacon bacon bits. So I threw those in here. I don't know if the artificial ones would hold up, but these are like real bacon. So we're gonna put this on low for eight hours, and I'll check in with you when I come home from work and we get it ready to eat. So I'm back home from work, and we are starting on dinner. So I've got one bag of frozen broccoli in the pot with half a brick of cream cheese. To this mixture, I'm gonna add some steak seasoning, steak and chop, get some really good flavor. And we're just gonna let everything finish cooking and all the cheese to melt and combine. While well, that's cooking, I'm working on cutting up some russet potatoes into like little cubes. Um, and then I'll show you how I season that here in a minute. I'm just gonna take these ones chopped and we'll get it going in the air fryer. Okay, here's our potatoes. Um, I've done the rest of our French fry seasoning, Parmesan and garlic. There wasn't much in here. I just wanted to use it up. And then I also did the Cabela's French fry seasoning steak fries. These should be really good. If you don't have any of these Cabela seasonings, you can always just use steak seasoning or salt and pepper. And then I had a handful of these I snatched from work today. They are the Chef Chamois garlic butter samples. <laughs> so I've got like four or five packs of butter in here. If you don't have any Chef Chamois on hand, you can always make your own garlic butter with just garlic seasoning, 
in butter or minced garlic or like the gooey pasty garlic and mix it up with some butter, throw it in here, or just regular butter if you don't have all, have all of that. If you're new here, I'm a mom of two and they're getting ornery, you can hear it. <laughs> So we're gonna take all this, pop it into the air fryer for 10 minutes, and we're gonna take it out at the five minute mark and give it all a good shushing and make sure it's just cooking well. It may need to go in a little longer, but 10 minutes for 400 degrees, that's how long it took last time. So I expect that should be right about right for this time as well. Okay, and this is dinner, fresh and plated. It smells delicious. Let's give it a taste. Bite of the potato, hot potato, very good. very hot and a bite of chicken and bacon oh great flavor oh my gosh that's delicious you guys gotta try that for dinner tonight we're gonna be doing up a spaghetti squash alfredo a spaghetti squash is absolutely delicious if you like spaghetti i think you'll like spaghetti squash it shreds up like a noodle it's got a crunchier texture and it is wetter than a noodle. It's a squash, <laughs> but it doesn't have a lot of flavor. So whatever sauce you put on it is kind of what it's gonna taste like. Um, I will say that it does have a sweetness to it. So your spaghetti like would probably be a little sweeter. I like to do it with Alfredo sauce. I feel like that's the best way to do it. So today we're gonna be doing a spaghetti sauce, alf spaghetti sauce Alfredo with sausage. So what we're gonna do first, take a knife and we're gonna stab it. Deeper than that, I don't have my tripod. Do nice deep stabs on it so it can vent. It's got a thick skin, so you gotta get through that. Um, so give it some good stabs all the way around and then we're gonna microwave it for six minutes on one side and then rotate it and do another six. Okay, my squash has done 12 minutes in the microwave and I also let it sit like an extra 10 minutes. Um, it's still very hot to the touch, but you can see all these bubbles coming out from where it vented. And if you give it a push, you can see it just kind of indents. It's getting a little soft and squishy. It's very hot. Um, that's what you're looking for. So you know that's done. Currently I have some smoked sausage going on over in a skillet here. These are the Cajun style and drolly sausages with leaking sausage water. Um, I got these at Members Mark and it's a smoked sausage, but any kind of smoked sausage you have will work. This is a Cajun style, super good, but just a regular smoked sausage. Or you can do chicken or turkey or whatever kind of meat you want, or you can skip meat entirely. Um, it's up to you. But I cut up three of the smoked sausages over here, so they're just doing their thing. It's pretty cooked, so it's really you're just reheating it. It's not raw, but it just needs to do its thing over here. And so back to the spaghetti squash. I'm gonna cut it open using a very serrated, serrated knife. This is a watermelon knife. So I'll be back with you in a second because I don't have my tripod and uh, this takes two hands. Sometimes it's hot enough you need to like wrap one end with a um, kitchen towel to protect your hand. They get very hot, just be cautious of that. Okay, so this one's actually cutting really easily so I'll go ahead and show you. I already done half of it. You can just see the steam coming out. It is hot, 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 hot. And you can also see all the liquid coming out. It's a very wet uh, dish. So we're gonna open it up and then all the steam's gonna come out. And now we need to get a spoon and scrape out all the seeds. Just get a regular spoon. And it's like cleaning out pumpkin guts. You just kind of scrape it all out. It's okay if some of it starts to shred on you, like how this is starting to pull apart and shred. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to have plenty of squash. I don't think I've ever made this and not have leftovers. So, and then if you want to feed this to your pets once it's cooled down, it'd be a great little topper for your dog's like food bowl. Okay, so that one's clean. And you'll know when it's done because this is a lot more like um, pumpkin pulp. You can kind of tell the difference on some of these. And then you see some of the stringy bits, you can kind of see the difference. So when you start getting down here and it all starts looking stringy, you know you got all the pulp out. Trust me, you can tell. Okay, so now we're gonna take a fork and we're just going to fluff up all the sides. First off, I'm gonna point out all the liquid you can see pooling in the bottom. It's a very liquidy vegetable, okay? So I know some people will serve their spaghetti squash in the skin so that it's like a boat, but in my experience, uh, you're gonna be better off throwing it into a pot with your sauce and letting it mix combine. 
and simmer a little bit to cook off some of the water. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna work on fluffing all this up and getting it into a bowl. So this is all you do, super easy. And this kind of all pulls up and you can see it kind of makes these stringy bits, which kind of look like pasta. So here's a little tip when you're scraping everything out is to go ahead and put it in your pot sitting upright. Um, you can hold it up here by the stem, mine kind of broke off. But again, it's very hot. I mean, you can just see the steam. So when you're doing it like this, it just kind of all falls into your pot that you're going to uh, mix it with the sauce in. So this kind of helps save your hands. Yoshi looks like he did something bad. Did you do something? You were just outside and you came inside. I don't think you've had a chance to do anything. What's going on, huh? Did you do something you're not supposed to? You look guilty. Okay, we've got everything mixed together on the stove. I've got my Alfredo sauce, which just came right out of a jar, my sausage and my spaghetti squash. What was that? My spaghetti squash? <laughs> I feel like I said that really weird. Um, I always feel like jar Alfredo sauces are so thick and creamy, they make my stomach hurt. So what I like to do is thin it out with some milk. So I've got my milk right here. I added it into my jar with what's left of my sauce. There's not much milk in here. Um, there you go, you can see it's kind of right there towards the bottom. So we're gonna put the lid on our sauce. This one came from, I believe, Aldi. It's a roasted garlic off right We've never tried it, but it looked like it'd be good. So we're just gonna shake this real good so it'll get the rest of the sauce out of the jar. And then when we pour, pour it into here, it's gonna help thin the sauce out a little bit so that doesn't give me a stomach ache. Okay, so that is what we are working with now. So we just wanna give everything a good mix and let it simmer. Um, I do have a pumpkin seed, not a pumpkin seed, a squash seed in here somewhere. So it's all right, huh? we'll have to fish that out here in a little bit, it won't hurt nothing. So we're just gonna bring this up to a simmer and kind of kick off some of that extra liquid. Okay, while it's simmering, we're gonna add in our spices and these are all to taste. We've got minced onion, you're more than welcome to add in raw chopped onion if you like uh parsley and a little bit of paprika oh and some black pepper and in my experience when you're cooking to taste a lot of times a nice even coating across the top will be enough flavor for whatever dish you're doing of course if it's something you really like feel free to go a little more heavy-handed however like the paprika i don't want a lot of heat just a little bit of flavor so i'm going to get go a little light on that and this is what dinner is looking like now that it is cooked and um, it's simmered down a little bit. It's not as soupy. There is still liquid in there. Again, it's a squash. It's gonna be a little liquidy. Uh, you go to have leftovers. Don't be alarmed when you find liquid in the bottom of your storage container. But they still taste really good second, second and third day. They kind of soak up more of whatever sauce you put them in. Kind of like a chili, <laughs> better with age, but don't be alarmed with the liquid. You just kind of can't get around it, but it tastes delicious. I love it with Alfredo sauce. I think it's even better than spaghetti sauce. And I'm gonna do a little bit of Parmesan. I did add an extra black pepper uh, while mine was cooking, because I like a nice amount of black pepper, but that's it for this dish. So for dinner tonight, we're gonna be doing up some fried chicken, some roasted butternut squash, and some fancy macaroni and cheese. So butternut squash here. I've just shown you what it looks like in case you don't know. Um, so I've got one chopped up. I've never actually made this myself and I haven't eaten butternut squash since I was a teenager. So like over 15 years ago and I'm honestly not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Should I have peeled it? I don't know. Hopefully it turns out okay. But we're gonna toss it with a little bit of oil here. Use whatever kind you have on hand. This is just gonna help our uh, seasoning to stick. And I've got a applewood rub that I'm gonna sprinkle on top. And some parsley. And then use your hands and mix it all together. Okay, so I've got a pan of oil heating up on the stove so we can start the cooking process on our fried chicken. But then I also have my oven baking at 350. 
That's where we're gonna roast our squash and finish cooking our chicken. So I have eight chicken tenders, and we're gonna go ahead and salt and pepper all of these. You wanna be fairly liberal with your salt and your pepper in this dish. And then give it all a decent rub. You may need to add more. Okay, so over here, I have my flouring mixture. So in this bowl, I have a healthy shaking of this batter right here, Uncle Buck's chicken fry mix. And then I've also added in some cake and chicken from Stone Mill. Well, this one says caked up chicken. I got it from Aldi. You can also get the kick and chicken, and I think it's from McCormick. Um, same thing, really good. And then I also added in some parsley. Now, if you don't have any fry mix on hand, you can feel free to do this with some panko breadcrumbs, or you can just get some regular basic white flour. You'll just wanna add a little extra seasonings to that. And then I also have a mixture here of three eggs scrambled with a splash of milk in it. Okay, so what we're gonna do from here is we are going to dip our chicken in the egg mixture and then into the batter and then put it back on our plate. You can always add a third step. Normally you would do this if you're doing bank, if you're doing breadcrumbs, but you would take your chicken, roll it in a flour, then roll it in the egg mixture, then roll it into the panko. Um, but since I'm using a flour mixture, I don't, I don't wanna go that route. So we're just gonna keep it a little more simple and just do eggs mixture back on the plate. At this point, we're gonna start frying our chicken. You wanna do about three minutes per side. And then we're gonna toss it on over to our pre-greased pan with the rest of our squash and get it going in the oven. Okay, our three minutes is up. Time to flip it and do another three. Okay, I finished deep frying all of my chicken in some oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some extra salt on top while they're still, you know, wet from the grease. You could flip that and add more salt if you want to. I'm not gonna bother with it. So all of this is gonna go into our pan for, or all of this is gonna go into our oven for 20 minutes and then we're gonna check the temperature on our chicken. I know the chicken looks done right now. It is not, I checked it with my kitchen thermometer. It's not even registering. What pre-frying it in the pan does is just give you a nice, crispy, golden outside color. It doesn't cook your chicken all the way through. And while my chicken is going in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this. This should only take about 10 minutes or so, but that'll give it like five to 10 minutes to sit on the stove and rest, which is exactly what the package calls for. So hopefully my chicken, squash, and macaroni and cheese will all be done at the same time. Also, you can get these at Aldi if you're curious. Okay, and that is what our dinner is looking like. 